Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wisdom Chat. I'm Phil Holdsworth of Orem Gold and my wonderful guest today is Yvonne Favarg, MP of Makerfield, which is, for anyone who doesn't understand, is near Wigan. Uh, Yvonne's been an MP now f since 2010 for the Labour Party and has been very active um, around things such as debt and personal finances, amongst many other things that Yvonne gets involved in. Yvonne, it's lovely to have you here. Um, you're the chair of the all-party parliamentary group for debt and personal finance, and I know I was sort of involved in that year um, for, a, for a while, but it's wonderful to have you here today, Yvonne. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. It's good to be here. Yes, I've chaired the group since I started in 2010. It sort of led from my uh, previous work experience, which was 23 years with Citizens Advice Bureau. So it seemed a natural progression, really. Yeah, definitely. And and I think in terms of my, my sort of short period of involvement there, um, I know you were doing some um, great work um, with that group and also highlighting some of the challenges that people especially people on sort of low income and debt were facing at, at the time and, and many changes have happened since then but we know um we're in difficult times now aren't we with the the rising cost of living i mean what are the kind of things that you're seeing yvonne well i think for the first time i'm getting emails now from people saying that they can't afford to pay their fuel bill they can't afford to eat yeah. Previously, I've always been able to send them to a citizen's advice bureau in the sure knowledge that there would be something they can do to deal with their debts. For the first time, like Martin Lewis, I'm saying, I don't know what to suggest because there just isn't enough money. And yeah. unless some of their debts are written off, there is absolutely nothing they can do. They haven't got the income coming in that allows them to live a, a, a basic standard of living, really. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it is a very challenging time, and one of the things that had been spoken of in the the debt and money advice world was those people who were on any form of um, uh, insolvency solution or debt management plan um, were have to having to go back to the drawing board to to rewrite them in a sense, and um, and actually you can't you can't add in uh, money that isn't there. <laughs> And so, yeah, it's becoming more and more difficult for these people. That's right. There just isn't enough money to actually live and pay creditors. And in some yeah. cases, even without the paying the creditors, they haven't got enough money to live in a comfortable manner, heating their homes. I've got people yeah. saying to me, I'm going to have to turn the heating off. Well, that is untenable, actually. It's all right now. We're coming into summer. But if bills go up any further in October, which they are planned to do, turning off the heating through the winter period is just not possible. And it's yeah. not just people on benefits who aren't working. It's people on benefits who are working. It's working people doing two jobs to keep afloat. It's, yeah. it's a wide strata of people. There are more people in poverty now than I've ever seen. Yeah. And, um, and what, what really struck me with regards to... Um, those people in work is this rise of in work poverty and 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 i 've come across some people who have got um two or three jobs and are still struggling to make ends meet um, it 's terrible yeah, I think that 's right. I mean we used to talk about the bumps in the road that caused the problems, for example, yeah. being ill or having an accident, having your hours shortened. It's not the bumps in the road causing the problems anymore. It's just everyday living that are causing problems for many people. I think one of the things that really struck me in conversations with people was the timing of some of these increases. So we've had the increase in terms of the, um, the energy prices. Uh, we've had the increase in the national insurance contribution. Um, and obviously the rapid rise in terms of um, the cost of, uh, of food and, and, and things like this uh, all come in at the same time and it's just compounded uh, the situation and people are asking why now, why, why in this way and what can we do about it and 
Yeah. That's right. I mean, the other problem, of course, for pensioners is the fact that the triple lock has gone. Their, their pension yeah. is not rising in line with inflation for the first time and food yeah. prices. And I do worry about pensioners who really do not want to get into debt turning off the heating because yeah. they are particularly vulnerable. I think there are things that can be done. I think there should be more done to reduce energy prices. And I think there's going to have to be in October, quite frankly. I cannot see energy prices going. I mean, £5,000 has been mentioned, which is ludicrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must admit, I was looking at um, our um, energy prices uh, recently, and and I think I was quoted something like five hundred and some pounds a month, where we had we were originally on about one hundred and eighty five. Uh, that's a huge increase, if that is actually correct. Um, so I'm I'm keeping a very close eye on it. But for those who are in a situation and don't tend to have any leeway, I mean. What would you say to them if they're really concerned uh, about their situation? I think they need to talk to their energy supplier. I yeah. think many of the energy suppliers have recognised it's going to be a problem. I do think they need to sit down and look completely at the budget. But as a last resort, I mean, Martin Lewis is saying for the first time, heat the human, not the home. Yeah. Yeah. That to me is... is it's just unfortunate we have to do this. I mean, I, I don't yeah. believe in it. one of the richest countries. It's necessary, but it will be. Yeah, you're, you're right. And I, I would, I was just thinking um, on that basis where we focus on just heating the person, um, it's the long-term um, impact it would have on the properties as well um, in terms of... I, I remember years ago going to see um, a client who um, had two young kiddies, a single parent, walking into the house and feeling this house is colder than outside. And it was no wonder the children kept being ill and, and so on. Um, we're, we're just sort of stacking up a disaster, really, aren't we? Well, yes, and a lot of the properties in my constituency are the old terraced houses. Well, some of them were insulated, but of course that stopped in 2010, the programme. So the insulation programme hasn't carried on. So they are in cold, drafty houses to begin with. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's a difficult one. I just think um, the other thing that's really come to the fore as well, not just the rising cost of living, um, but is the rise in um, fraud in, in terms of scams and things like this. And I know you've got a particular interest in this area. I mean, just, just say a little bit about what, what your concerns are on this. I think there's a number of areas. I think the pandemic, with isolation and people being at home, they've relied more on online. And online, there's been a lot of fraudulent uh, activity going on. There's been uh, people saying this investment will give you 9, 10, 12, 12%, which is not possible. They've used celebrities to endorse it. Um, there's also the push payment fraud, which is when somebody imitates, say, a solicitor. I had a constituent who was buying a house and they got an email from the solicitor, looked very official. Yeah. And it said that um, our bank account details have changed. Please transfer the money for your house into this account. They did that and it was a fraudulent account. Yeah. It took them a long time to get the money back. And in the meantime, they had real problems, of course, with buying the new home because the money hadn't gone to the right person. So I think banks need to publish how many people they reimburse if they are being defrauded by what appears to be very, very sophisticated fraud. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of the fraudsters are so sophisticated that even the office that investigates them said they could be fooled by it. And if that's the case... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's kind of no hope for us, is there? <laughs> but yeah, I I do understand that, and and it reminds me of um, quite a few emails that I've received over the last um, I don't know six to twelve months. I've seen an increase in the number of emails that um, I look at it, and I just think that's definitely a fraudulent email. And but it's for for people who are not aware. Um, it can be very hard for them to identify because they look so genuine, um, logos and everything on them. 
it's not just email it's telephone calls as well from people who sound very genuine as one of my constituents said he sounded a very nice man i really trusted him well yes that's what fraudsters do yeah yeah and we know that even with the uh, the loan sharks which we've 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 been sort of tackling for many years now um how um w we hadn't realized that often these things are perpetrated um particularly on the loan shark side by people that are already known who have sort of built up a friendship and disarmed people um to thinking that they're nice people good people and then we hear these horrendous stories of how people are being hounded um sometimes not just the psychological side but the physical um side as well um j just i know there's been a lot of work on the loan shark side but i know this is very much part of um what is affecting our nation at the moment and what we're having to deal with the fraud uh, and so on what are your thoughts on that Yvonne? yes i mean i think the, the basic underlying problem is a there's not enough money for people to live on and b those who have a bad credit history or no credit history um who can least afford it to charge the most credit or refuse credit by the other agencies so they turn to what is they think a friend who is generously offering to loan them money yeah. even if to a higher rate but frankly you know if your kid needs shoes what do you do yeah really you you are in a bind and you want to do the best thing but they are in fact loan sharks it is illegal yeah. and people are stepping over the bounds i would always say do go to the local CAB, talk to the illegal money lending unit. There are a lot of places to go, but people are at the end of their tether and they're probably they're ashamed. There is still a stigma to debt, which there shouldn't be. Yeah. There really shouldn't. During the pandemic, I think I think everybody has debts of some form or another, whether it's a mortgage, whether it's a loan for a car or anything else. The difference is that some people at that time can afford to pay it. And at other times, they can't afford to pay it, and then it becomes debt. It's not yeah. a stigma. Everybody is in debt to some form or another. Yeah, yeah. I agree with the stigma side, um, because even in the work that I do, there's um, uh, listening to people's conversations and the things that they say, you can clearly tell that people feel quite nervous about talking about their, their money because they're afraid of what people might say, what people might think. But it's really important, as perhaps you and I would agree, that... Um, it is important to go and talk to somebody and CAB definitely. Um, I remember years ago, if I can just mention this story, uh, when my daughters were young, we went through a period of um, uh, redundancies. Um, there was three redundancies in two years and it really knocked us back financially an awful lot. And we needed shoes for our, um, for our daughters. And we went to uh, CAB and they actually told us of a scheme that was going on where we were able to access it and and purchase shoes for our daughters so it's definitely worth talking to people um when you, when you're in a difficult place isn't it yeah i mean i i was left with my daughter who was only 18 months old at the time and i was left a single parent when my husband walked out quite suddenly yeah. and it's a dreadful situation to be in. It's really difficult. But I think until you, you know, it, you need to appreciate that everyone has different issues and problems and you're not alone. Yeah. And I think that's one of the biggies that um, when you're in that, what, what I would term a dark place, it does feel like you're alone. But actually, there's so many more people out there. Um, and there are people that you can talk to. So, um, yeah, the, the other thing I was thinking of, um, uh, and you mentioned to me, Yvonne, was um, your concerns about some of the cheap electrical products that are out there on the market. Clearly, when people are being pressed, they're going to say, can I get this? Can I get it cheaper elsewhere? And so on. So they're going to see these kind of deals through what seemingly are re reputable companies. What, what kind of things have you been coming across? I think there's, a diff there's some different aspects. I think one of the problems is Amazon Marketplace, mm -hmm. which 
Amazon say they have no responsibility for their third party sellers, but it's done through the Amazon site. And I was saying previously that actually, I'm not sure people recognize that buying from a third party seller on marketplace and buying from Amazon direct are two different things, but there are quite often cheap electrical phone chargers um, for Apple phones, Samsung phones that are dangerous. I have seen them actually burst into flames yeah. with their left on and cause house fires. The other problems I've seen are with um, some of the websites like Alibaba and Wish who are selling cheap copies of Dyson hair dryers for 40, 50 quid. Looks like a bargain. I've seen one that when it was switched on burst into flames. Now, do you want that near your hair? To be honest, yeah. if it looks too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. And take, take your point about um, when you're dealing with, and I, I, for example, I deal with Amazon an awful lot. I buy a lot of products and stationery and things like that through Amazon. But um, every now and again, there is something else that I need to buy, like an electrical item, technology or something like this. And you don't realise that Amazon are representing perhaps many buyers. Um, but the assumption, and this was, I suppose, me in a way, assuming that because it's Amazon, then it's, it's okay because they will have done all the checks. But actually, they don't. And it's, uh, and I suppose that's what you're referring to, isn't it, Von, about the fact that people will assume they get it, they're buying from a reputable firm, but in actual fact, this is actually from another party, um, could be from anywhere in the world, and there's no guarantees that you're going to, A, you're going to get it, or B, that it's going to be the product that you thought it would be. That's right. And you can't rely on reviews either, because there have been quite a number of cases which have investigated where people have been paid to give five star reviews to products and some of the products even the verified purchase ones they're people who've been sent the goods for free and have been incentivized to give a five star review and if yeah. they don't do it they get quite threatening letters actually oh dear me it's i must admit i bought an item i mentioned this to you earlier i bought an item and i hadn't realized it was coming from the far east until i'd actually bought it I never got the item and I never got my money back. And that was through Amazon. Um, and whichever way I tried, I just couldn't get a resolution to this. And they had reviews on there that looked very genuine reviews. And I suppose if they've taken that approach, then it's easy to, to dupe anybody, really. Yeah, it's very easy to get to the top of the rankings in Amazon. Yes. Uh, and that is a real problem because... If you can't trust the reviews, how are you going to know what the product is? I mean, I admit, I have bought phone chargers that weren't original for Apple. I don't do it anymore, and I have thrown them away because I have seen so many examples of where the wires, and they've not got any um, insulation, and things yeah. like that. So now, but, but then that means paying the prices that, frankly, people these days are going to find very difficult to afford. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. In terms of what we've talked about, Yvonne, I'm just conscious that time's passing us by. Are, is there anything else that you would actually like to raise with our listeners now that uh, you think is you know, important at this time? I think one of the things we're, I'm working on at the moment is with the Jubilee Debt Campaign about cancelling out some of the arrears that people will never be able to pay back, whether it's by the pandemic or because the cost of living has risen. And actually, cancelling out this debt would save money in the long run on mental health issues and costs to local authorities and other public bodies. The other thing I'm working on is actually getting local authorities to not use the bailiffs as a first resort or even at all to collect council tax debts. We need to make sure that public bodies collect their debts responsibly, particularly with the cost of living crisis. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and again, I sort of echo that, um, looking at our sort of council tax bill and how that's increased. It's, it's almost like increases uh, are coming from every quarter. And, um, and there comes a point in which you say, you can't take any more. And, um, and I can imagine for some people that's a, 
um, a very difficult place to be. Um, but I would say, like anything, um, if they are struggling, this is one of the things I suppose you and I really want, and that is for people to not stay silent, but to speak up, to ask for help. There are lots of um, good organisations around that are free to use that would give help and support. Citizens Advice, um, excellent. You've got the uh, Money Helper online through the Money and Pension Service. Um, and then there's other organisations that people can use that are free. And we'd always say make sure it is free because that's available for you. That's right. I mean, don't think you're by yourself. You're not. And don't wait until things get completely out of hand and unmanageable. It's much easier to deal with issues at an early stage than it is when you're absolutely at the end of your tether and you maybe have gone to one of those illegal money lenders. Yeah. And please, please think about using buy now, pay later. Don't do it if possible, particularly for food. That's yeah. another one that needs regulating. Yes, yeah. I know there's, there's been quite a bit um, in the various uh, press and articles about the buy now, pay later. Um, Yvonne, and I know that time's escaped us now. Thank you so much for that. If anybody wants to sort of pass on any sort of stories or experiences to you what would be the best way in which they could do that they can always contact me by email i can only deal with constituent inquiries but yep. uh, obviously i can also i can look at all the issues from the yep. debt and personal finance point of view um yep. i do have an email if you just look at my name yvonne favarg which is f-o-v-a-r-g-u-e then you'll find my email address Thank you very much, Yvonne. I really appreciate your time. And, um, and for our listeners, please don't say uh, start, uh, silent. Um, if you are struggling in any way, talk to somebody. And as uh, both Yvonne and myself have said, you know, there are plenty of people around who can do that. Or um, please do email Yvonne with um, any thoughts, stories that you may have that could be helpful to actually uh, tackle some of these issues that we've talked about. So thank you very much, Yvonne. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's been great to talk to you again.